What comes to mind when you think of Bengaluru? It has many monikers, Garden City, Knowledge Hub, Startup Hub, India's IT capital, and many more. But increasingly, it's never-ending traffic pileups, crumbling infrastructure, flooded streets, potholes, and other problems have made more headlines, increasingly becoming synonymous with the city's identity. In Bengaluru, it is not the distance, but the time taken to travel that distance is what matters. Sometimes, even a kilometer of travel takes well over an hour. Hello and welcome to The Print. I am reporting from Bengaluru, where a regular daily commute feels like going to a battle. The city aspires global recognition for its better and more enduring attributes, but has gained notoriety as one of the most congested cities globally. And the situation isn't getting any better. The Bengaluru City Police are now relying more on technology to beat traffic blues. They launched a new app, Astrum, that commuters can use through which they can get real-time data on where the pain points are, the reasons for the same, and other data that can help commuters plan their journey better. This is part of efforts to consistently try and adopt innovative technologies like artificial intelligence-operated signals, apps that inform public of congestion to help bring down some of the stress of commuters. So what is this new technology? Uh, you've, you've launched a new app as well. So what does this app do and uh, how do the uh, commuters of Bangalore benefit from this app? Uh, basically, we have... Uh a platform called Astram. It's a big data platform. It takes data from multiple sources and gives us insights into how the traffic is flowing in various parts of Bangalore. So we created a companion app for public as well, uh, which has several features. Uh, the first and foremost feature is that it can uh, give you the various incidents which affect traffic flow. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, road accidents, uh, water logging, tree fall, mm -hmm. protests, processions, vehicle mm -hmm. off-roads like that. And you can plan your route. For example, if you say you commit to work regularly on a daily basis, so you can have that as your favorite route and you can see the congestion in and around that area. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, you can be a good Samaritan. If you notice an accident, you can s click a photo of that accident and submit it to us so that we can respond to it early. Okay. No personal data is collected from that. You yeah. can report violations of pub other public doing violations. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can also view and pay your fines. And if you find any uh, faults in the photograph of the violation, you can even dispute that. Okay. So there are multiple features which can be used for public, yeah. which would help them uh, in the long run. Mm. And also by crowdsourcing this data, we also can improve service delivery. Okay. Yeah. How? I mean, uh, so as me as uh, a, you know a resident, a commuter in Bangalore. So if I were to plan a trip from here to let's say Indranagar or somewhere, right? So how, does does your data actually say where the congestion points are, which hour of the day, how many days data? Do you all have historical data? As of now, we have not yet opened that kind of data to public. Live, what is the congestion level? What are the incidents live which are happening from your start to destination is available. Okay. One, it can help you plan the route. We don't intend to be a sort of a proxy or an alternative towards any other map-based services because they they are completely something else. Hmm. What it helps us and it helps the public with is that one, you can find out what are the different various incidents which are affecting traffic flow at that real time and you can find that out. Okay. Uh, and with various other things that I helped you, uh, spoke to you about. More importantly, uh, from our perspective, if people start partnering with us, collaborating with us, by way of reporting incidents, by way of reporting accidents, um, we can help somebody in need. Okay. Right? It can also help, like for example, if violations are happening, we can also curb that mm. uh, by way of uh, imposing fines on people committing violations. Okay. Yeah. So you've used technology, you've ushered in a lot of technology in Bangalore's traffic. Okay. How has it helped? Has has traffic flow increased? What are your learnings and how has it helped uh, the you know common commuter in Bangalore? Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, traffic management, we have two kinds of technologies. One is the Astram, which is a big data platform, which works on a macro level. We're seeing important corridors, important arterial roads, high density corridors uh, for entire Bangalore. But from a junction perspective, that is micro level uh, technology infusion, at each junction, we are trying to implement the cosy cost system, which is a AI based adaptive signal. Mm. Basically, it understands what is the traffic flow by the vehicular count at that junction and gives preference to that having high vehicular count. 
So in corridors where ETCS has been implemented, we have seen anywhere between 15 to 17 percent reduction in travel times okay. and uh, increased in the hourly throughput of the vehicles at those junctions. Yep. When in some corridors, we have been able to synchronize junctions as well. Hmm. We have been able to give priority to ambulances as well in certain areas. Hmm. So yes, wherever cause cause signals have been developed and implemented, uh, people in Bangalore might be aware of this uh, VAC in the, this thing, right? Correct, so that yeah. is a cause cause signal, right? Hmm. So that certainly has helped in traffic management. But at a macro level in Astram, when we plan and uh, what we do is for primarily for planning, say a big event is happening in say Chinnaswamy Stadium or BIEC, we understand what is the traffic flows and what needs to be done and we coordinate with various other agencies like KSRTC, BMTC, BMRCL hmm. and at a macro level we do. That might not be felt immediately, but certainly over the long run it, it helps. But on a day-to-day -day basis at the junction level, at a corridor level, certainly it is helped. Okay. So, where do you think, how do you think this technology will evolve eventually and what are the roadblocks to this technology itself? See, I, the plan is at the end of March 2025, we will have 500 signals in Bangalore, traffic lights, 500 junctions which are operational by traffic lights, of which 200 would be AI based. Next couple of years, we want to go for entirely AI based signaling uh, for entire Bangalore city. Hmm. Right? That is the plan that we have. Astram also, we want to create a digital twin for Bangalore where we understand traffic flows in real time. We do have a digital model, but it's not in real time. We have data from multiple sources like our ATCS cameras, our ITMS cameras, our safe city cameras. We have a plethora of data which we are trying to use and go to as a digital twin which will give us a real-time simulation along with other aggregators. For example, BMRCL is a mobility and a public transport. We have BMTC, all right. We have some other uh, bus aggregators, cab aggregators, that data we want to create a digital twin. That's where the future is, right? Okay. We want to expand to that level where we can actually simulate live data and understand and take insights from it and help in mitigating with the existing infrastructure, mind you. Right? It also helps us find out bottlenecks in the system. Okay. Um, the bottleneck, the challenges we face is the one is the sheer explosion of vehicles. From 2013 to 2023, in the last decade, we doubled our uh, registered number of vehicles from 56 lakhs to 1.12 crores. Today we are at 1.2 crores. We added 8 lakh vehicles in 2024. So sheer explosion of vehicles. We are the largest number of privately registered vehicles in India. Mm. Um, and the slow adoption of uh, public transport. I think we were late towards public transport. Uh, we are trying to do the catch up to that. So I think uh, better adoption of public transport is that these three things I think are causing the major pain points. And the last would be the pace of infrastructure, especially road infrastructure, to cater to the needs of the in, uh, vehicles being added on a daily basis is uh, not keeping up with the requirements. So these, these these would be the challenges we are facing. What are the challenges? Uh, why is there such, I mean, why is Bangalore suddenly synonymous with bad traffic problems? What are the challenges? How does one improve, uh, you know, traffic flow in Bangalore? See, primarily, I think uh, major challenges is the um, sheer explosion of vehicles, right? I mean, we just doubled in the last decade uh, from 56 lakhs to 1.12 crores and uh, at 2024, we are at 1.2 crores. I think the pace of infrastructure, especially road infrastructure is not keeping up with in line with the uh, pace of vehicles being added to the roads every day. Uh, vehicles are growing at 8%, whereas our human population is growing at 4%. Hmm. Now, we almost have almost one vehicle per, per person in Bangalore, which, okay. is, which is not a good trend. Right? And uh, the pace of uh, public transport growth has not in commensurate with the needs of the city. And the adoption of public transport is also slow mm. compared to other cities. I think that's where we are at. I think uh, short term measures by way of uh, road infrastructure, uh, it can be flyovers, it can be tunnel roads or whatever would contribute significantly to reducing the travel times and easing mm. congestion in various areas. But in the long term, I think if for our daily needs, like your commute to work, your commute to school, public transport can be adopted, it can be made affordable, if it can be made more convenient, I think that's the way to go. Any good, livable, vibrant city has a good public transport system which caters to the daily needs of this thing. Mm. I think if you can see Bangalore faces a major issue during peak hours, that's the morning peak hours mm. and the evening peak hours. That's because of the commute to school and work, right? Already a lot of schools have adopted buses and uh, other vehicles to ferry school children en masse, mm. which has significantly reduced our uh, school peak hour timings. 
whereas in what for other p cars i think the adoption is slower i think uh, in the long run i think um, we should move towards other cities hmm. where a majority of the people use public transport to travel but that includes so we need to start thinking from traffic towards mobility right it includes mm. pedestrians first mile last mile connectivity how you can use multimodal public transport you can mm. use walk bus cycle or use a um, e bike or and then use a metro or something like that i need to we need to work towards that okay. yeah because i think good cities have um, higher adoption of public transport where about 60 70% of the public use public transport mm. for their daily requirements whereas in bangalore it's about 40% so we need to bridge that gap so in your collection of data in the in your you know technology based learnings which is the worst day of the week in terms of traffic which is the worst peak hour traffic wednesday okay um i think it's because uh, still no, not everybody has shifted to business as usual mm. uh, bangalore being it city a significant uh, portion of the workforce are it professionals okay a majority of them um, i think work on tuesday wednesday thursdays and work from home from friday to monday hmm. so i think um, and especially wednesday as we see a huge uh, surge in traffic okay. uh, which is i mean quite contrary to what we believe that monday is yeah higher so it's actually a wednesday do you get stuck in traffic as well or do you get a free pass no i don't i wish i did <laughs> uh, this is one of the features of astram which is enabling traffic police in mitigating congestion and uh, facilitating smooth flow of traffic Uh, as you can see from this analytics this shows the day of this compares the day of the uh, week and uh, which which day of the week ex- is experiencing uh, how much congestion as you can clearly see from this uh, wednesday is experiencing uh, highest traffic uh, of course it varies across the city but this is the general view of how uh, traffic is being experienced and as you can see from this map Uh, clearly the peak of uh, saturday is shifting towards uh, 12 pm the traffic is peaking, uh, peaking at around uh, 12 pm uh, so how uh, this helps is this uh, enables in better data driven decision making like allowing of uh, heavy vehicles into the city based on the uh, congestion and the peak hour